The world is changing fast, but you can learn it at a slower pace. Special English. You're listening to Special English. Here's the news. A special exhibition on Confucian culture has been launched at the Palace Museum in Beijing. The exhibition features 380 items or sets of artifacts from nearly 30 archaeological and cultural institutions, both domestic and international. Through archaeological evidence, preserved texts, and cultural relics, the exhibition explores the development of Confucian culture while elucidating the core principles of Confucian thought and highlighting its profound global influence. Jointly organized by the Palace Museum and the International Confucian Association, the exhibition runs until January 5th next year. This year marks the 2,575th birth anniversary of Confucius. An online version of the exhibition is also available on the Palace Museum's official website. This is Special English. A wave of science popularity has swept across China since mid-September, with some 200,000 activities of various types held to raise scientific literacy among the public, especially the students. A high-tech show was staged recently at a primary school in Tonghai County in southwest China's Yunnan province. Students were seated in a circle on the playground, captivated by a robot dog skilled at flipping over and dancing. The show was part of an activity held to popularize science and technology upon campus. It featured exhibits about ecological protection, sci-tech innovation, and some instruments demonstrating how to generate wind power. Beyond the science popularization activities, this autumn semester, many schools across the country made adjustments to their science courses in alignment with the frontiers of new technologies and explored new ways to make such classes more attractive. In East China's Fujian province, more than 300 university-based laboratories and science and technology museums were engaged in tailoring off-campus science classes for primary and middle school students. They customized 
the procedures of such classes together with teachers. Last December, Fu Qian put forward twenty measures to improve science education, including deepening curriculum and teaching reforms, improving education resources, and giving play to the public sites that are suitable for science popularization. In particular, it required opening such sites as science and technology museums, observatories, and memorial halls of scientists to primary and middle school students free of charge. Some research institutes were made open to the public for the first time, covering the sectors of science, agriculture, and environment. These local efforts were made in response to a set of guidelines on strengthening the education of science for primary and middle school students, which was released last May by the Ministry of Education and 17 other authorities. The latest statistics show that there are more than 1,600 sci-tech and related museums across the country, around 1,000 of which are free to the public. China aims to become a global leader in science and technology by 2035 taking education and technology as basic underpinnings for Chinese modernization. It is committed to the strategy of invigorating China through science and education. You're listening to Special English. A unique zookeeper developed using artificial intelligence and synthetic biology has joined the giant panda support team at Madrid Zoo Aquarium in Spain, providing information about the panda pair that arrived from China in April. Irenia, a digital avatar previously featured on the zoo's TikTok channel delivering educational insights about the pandas, has now taken a significant step forward offering real-time information to visitors. Being an expert in all panda-related issues, Irenia uses cloud technology to answer visitors' questions about the animals and other aspects of the zoo in both English and Spanish, incorporating videos and illustrations into her responses. Jin Shi and Zhu Yu, both born in 2020, arrived in Madrid in April following the renewal of an agreement for giant panda protection 
with the China Wildlife Conservation Association. They are set to remain in Spain for the next ten years. This is special English. Why is Mount Chumolangma much higher than the other high peaks? A new study presents evidence that river erosion is behind the recent uplift of the highest mountain on Earth. A research team led by Wang Chengshan. From the China University of Geoscience and others from University College London carried out the study, which has been published in the journal Nature Geoscience. According to Wang, also an academician of. Chinese Academy of Sciences, the formation of Mount Chumolangma, as well as the whole Himalayas, is mainly due to the collision between the Indian Plate and the Eurasian Plate. But the collision theory alone. Cannot fully explain why Mount Chumolangma is nearly two hundred and fifty meters higher than the second highest in the world, which itself is only tens of meters higher than the world's third and fourth highest peaks. Such difference suggests that the uplift of Mount Chumolangma may be caused by some unique mechanism. After years of research, the scientists discovered a unique evolution of the water system around Mount Chumolangma. Which is closely related to the evolution of the Kosi River. The study indicated that about eighty-nine thousand years ago, the Kosi River experienced a river capture event, a common phenomenon in mountain building regions. Where one river steals the flow of another river through erosion, it led to a rapid expansion of the drainage area and an acceleration of the erosion rate, with the maximum annual erosion depth reaching up to twelve millimeters. As the river bed deepened, the surrounding rocks experienced isostatic rebound due to the weight loss, a process that contributed to the further uplift of Mount Chumolangma. The study estimated that since the river capture event. The elevation of Mount Chumolangma has increased by about 0.2 to 0.5 millimeters per year, accumulating an additional height of 15 to 50 meters. Wang noted, although tectonic movements remain the primary cause of the uplift of Mount Chumolangma, this study reveals a new mechanism of mountain 
uplift caused by river capture, which helps people better understand the evolution of orogenic belt and the process of peak formation. You're listening to Special English. If I were to ask you to name a great Chinese thinker, who would come to mind? One, two, three. Time's up. Did you think of Confucius? Don't worry if I guessed wrong, but chances are his name came to mind. Confucius is so influential in China and around the world that there's a saying, to truly understand China, you must first understand Confucius and his legacy. Having lived over 2,500 years ago in ancient China, Confucius could never have imagined that his ideas would endure for millennia. His teachings, which we call Confucianism, laid the foundation for much of Chinese culture and continue to shape how Chinese people live and conduct themselves today. One of the most famous texts on Confucianism is the Analects of Confucius, commonly referred to as the Analects. This classic work covers a broad range of topics, including politics, education, philosophy, and moral principles for personal conduct. You may have heard some of its well-known quotes, such as, Do not impose on others what you yourself would not wish imposed on you. Well, you might easily be misled into thinking that the Analects was written by Confucius. Indeed, it is true that the book is the most inclusive record of his ideas and teachings, but the book was actually compiled by his students rather than the master himself. To better understand Confucius' ideas, let's briefly explore his life. He was born during a chaotic time in ancient China known as the Spring and Autumn period. Political and social orders were breaking down, which deeply influenced Confucius' views on society and governance. In his thirties, Confucius founded a private school which was quite different from what we might expect today. Instead of focusing on academic subjects, Confucius taught principles for living with integrity, kindness, and virtue. What was unique about his school was that it accepted students from all social classes at a time when education had been reserved for the aristocracy. Confucius believed 
that education should be accessible to everyone, regardless of status. The school was initially quite small, but it kept on expanding. It is estimated that Confucius had more than three thousand students in his lifetime. After the death of Confucius, his disciples recorded his sayings and thought. Compiling one of the most significant classics, which later came to be known as the Analects of Confucius, the book is therefore a record of the words and deeds of Confucius, as well as fragments. Of dialogues between the great philosopher and his disciples, the collection contains the main tenets of Confucius' philosophy. These include Ren, which can be translated as benevolence or kindness in English. They also include li, which means ceremony, customs, and social ethics. Confucius also came up with the entirely original idea of junzi. Some may translate this as a noble man or a gentleman. But a better translation might be an exemplary person. The book also records the principles advanced by Confucius for running a government. He insisted that a true king should govern his country with virtue, putting the people's interests first. And considering them as if they were his own, it's interesting to note that Confucius' ideas weren't widely accepted during his lifetime. In fact, it wasn't until around three hundred years later, during the Han Dynasty, that Confucianism. Became the dominant philosophy in China. This is special English. That's the end of this edition of Special English. To recap, I'm going to read one of the news items again at normal speed. Please listen carefully. A special exhibition on Confucian culture has been launched at the Palace Museum in Beijing. The exhibition features 380 items or sets of artifacts from nearly 30 archaeological and cultural institutions, both domestic and international. Through archaeological evidence, preserved texts, and cultural relics, the exhibition explores the development of Confucian culture while elucidating the core principles of Confucian thought and highlighting its profound global influence. Jointly organized by the Palace Museum and the International Confucian Association, the exhibition runs until January 5th next year. This year marks the 2,575th birth anniversary of Confucius. An online version of the exhibition is also available on the Palace Museum's official website. This is the end of today's program. I hope you'll join us every day. To learn English at a slower pace.